This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. More than 1,400 pages of newly released documents show how two lawyers from Wisconsin tried to overturn President Biden's 2020 victory in the state. James Troupas and Kenneth Chesbro turned over the records yesterday to settle a lawsuit. The papers show how they put together slates of fake electors in Wisconsin and six other battleground states. The U.S. Supreme Court is dismissing two lawsuits trying to keep Donald Trump's name off presidential ballots in Wisconsin this year. The justices say only Congress can do that. The Wisconsin lawsuits were part of a nationwide effort to remove Trump from the ballots. They pointed to a provision in the U.S. Constitution banning anyone who's engaged in insurrection from holding federal office. Today is Super Tuesday. Voters in 15 states and American Samoa should put President Biden and Donald Trump closer to their party's nominations. Trump spokeswoman Caroline Levitt on WISN-TV's Upfront. We have already shifted gears to focus on the general election in November. So we'll be coming to Wisconsin. We'll be coming to battleground states like Pennsylvania and Michigan in the next several months. Biden surrogate Malcolm Kenyatta tells Upfront he's not concerned the president is losing in battleground states. Whether it's Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania, you know, these are states that have always been close. Wisconsin is one of a handful of states expected to decide the winner in November. Recent rainy weather has somewhat lowered the risk of wildfires in Wisconsin. The Department of Natural Resources says most of the state's midsection is at a low level of danger, while southern and eastern Wisconsin are still at high risk. 138 wildfires have burned about 300 acres of land in Wisconsin already this year. March is National Reading Month. Wisconsin librarians say kids read books if they like the topics and the formats, like graphic novels for preteens. It is a lot of dialogue. Sometimes there's some context, you know, paragraphs and stuff in there. But it gives kids that visual, and sometimes they need that to keep going. Blaze Burton works at the Mercer Library. He says kids respond better when teachers and parents take an informal approach. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Fall Creek community may be getting a bigger public library soon. The Fall Creek Library Board says residents have expressed concerns about the size of the current facility, so the library is working on a proposal for a new, larger building. Currently, the library sits in a village hall, but under the proposal, the new library would be three times as big. The bigger space would allow the library to provide more services to the community, including a free internet connection and computers for the rural community to use. The identity of the man whose body was pulled from the water in Hudson has now been revealed. According to the Hudson Police Department, 34-year-old Anders Engstrom of Hudson was identified as the man found dead in the water at Lakefront Park over the weekend. He was found around 8.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Officials say Engstrom appears to have died in an accidental drowning. They say there are no indications of foul play and did not speculate as to what led Engstrom to fall into the water. A popular Eau Claire location to see live music has lost its liquor license after being closed for the last four years. According to a WQOW report, the Metro closed after a kitchen fire in February of 2020 and was planning a reopening show at the end of the month. Unfortunately, because the establishment was closed for so long, the city attorney's office revoked their liquor license last January. The Metro reapplied for a license but did not pass all the required inspections by the deadline needed to keep it. The time for property owners to start keeping an eye out for spongy moth eggs on their trees has come. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is reminding residents that with the warmer-than-usual weather, people should be on the lookout for the egg masses of the species that plagued over 370,000 acres of woodland last year. Officials say the outbreak is expected to continue spreading this year, and if residents see egg masses on their trees, they should destroy them before they hatch. A Chippewa Falls man has been sentenced to 35 years in prison after entering a guilty plea to attempted homicide charges. Joshua Mogo was arrested over a year ago for shooting his ex-girlfriend shortly after two restraining orders had been filed against him. He reportedly told officers that she, quote, got what she deserved after he was arrested on the night of the shooting. Mogo pled guilty to attempted first-degree intentional homicide, burglary, firearm possession by a convicted felon, and violating a restraining order. 
A reckless homicide case was settled in Burnett County on Friday. Danielle Rodriguez pleaded guilty to second-degree reckless homicide after other charges were dismissed. Rodriguez and Shane Bearhart allegedly snuck a substance containing fentanyl into the county jail, leading to the overdose death of an inmate. Rodriguez was sentenced to five years in prison and seven years of extended supervision and is eligible for an early release if she completes a substance abuse program. The case against Bearhart remains open. Now that Gateway's Counseling Services has a new location, they're looking for new counselors. The organization says they're preparing to open this month and have started accepting clients, but they need more employees to fully meet the community's needs. Gateways will offer things like group counseling and substance abuse services. The organization is hoping to hire as many people from these soon-to-be-closed HSHS and Purveya facilities as they can, and any interested candidates can apply on the website. The Eau Claire Skaters Association is looking for community help to put new lights in at a skate park. The organization is hoping to raise $8,000 to put new lights at each end of Boyd Skate Park to decrease vandalism and safety concerns while giving people more opportunities to use the park. Officials hope that if they're able to raise the funds quickly, they'll be able to put the lights in at the park by July. They also hope the lights will make the rest of the park safer as well. Donations can be made online. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. It is going to be a little warmer today, mostly sunny, up to 47 for a high today. The wind out of the northeast at 5 to 15. Tonight, it'll be clear, our low 27. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 51. Then by Thursday, some sun in the morning, mostly cloudy in the afternoon, 53, with some scattered rain by Thursday night. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 29. Huge win at home for the Bucks. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Bucks beat the LA Clippers 113 to 106 at Five Serve Forum, and they did it without Giannis or Chris Middleton, both out with injuries. The Bucks were down by 13, but made changes on defense. Doc Rivers. We went zone a lot in the second half. We switched everything. You know, maybe their timing was off because of the zone. I, I thought it did help for sure. Uh, and then I thought our execution offensively was unbelievable down the stretch. We got the ball. When they trapped, we moved the ball. We kept the game simple. Damian Lillard scored 41 points and talked about how Doc Rivers has helped out at head coach. When he came in, he was just like, you guys don't run this. <laughs> you guys don't run that. Like, this is stuff we hated to guard against you. College basketball, Marquette drops to number eight in the AP Top 25 after losing to Creighton. The Badgers did not receive a single vote after being ranked number six just a month ago they host rutgers thursday are they concerned no because this this league is hard this is one of the better teams in the country you know we got enough that we have to continue to try to get better at that'll help us going forward so right now it's all about rutgers and getting ready for that after a day off the brewers back at it in spring training baseball with a game today against the giants then a split double header tomorrow against the reds and the guardians milwaukee now three and six in cactus league action but manager pat murphy doesn't want to discourage his young players. I always say, prepare to play good, treat yourself good. Which one do you think's the toughest? Treating yourself good. Kids, they still need help because they'll beat themselves up. They'll put their expectations so high. That's the part, you know. Hockey, the UW-Madison men's hockey team, getting ready to host the Big Ten playoffs this weekend against Ohio State, the first game Friday night. NFL, after two seasons, the Denver Broncos have released quarterback Russell Wilson. We were on this journey, and so we beat Green Bay, Kansas City, we beat them, and I got that call that, hey, we're going to bench you for the next nine games. That's quarterback Russell Wilson with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. I'm Pete with the 62nd Showbiz Beat. University of Wisconsin-Madison film studies professor and scholar David Bordwell passed away on February 29th at the age of 76 due to degenerative lung disease. According to Variety, UW described Bordwell as a prolific film researcher and passionate cinephile. Bordwell taught at the University of Wisconsin from 1973 until his retirement in 2004. The title of Taylor Swift's new album, Tortured Poets Department, is not random. According to a report in the New York Post, the 34-year-old Swift is a descendant of legendary and tortured poet Emily Dickinson. Dickinson was a 19th century poet who wrote over 1,800 poems. Taylor Swift has over 240 songs and dates a guy who can sing the Beastie Boys at a karaoke level just before closing time. Needless to say, Swift has a ways to go if she wants to catch up with Dickinson in regards to verse. She is, however, crushing her cousin when it comes to social media followers.
Dune 2 is the chosen one, as it grossed over $80 million and took the number one spot at the domestic box office as expected. The film took in almost $180 million during its opening weekend worldwide. Dune 1 opened during the COVID pandemic. As cinematic as the film was, it was not as edge of your seat as Dune 2. Dune 2 is not a perfect film by any stretch, but very exciting, and despite the two and a half hour plus running time, moved well enough so that it flew by. Dune 2 is the highest grossing opening weekend of 2024 so far. Sydney Sweeney had to use her Saturday Night Live monologue to dispel rumors she was dating anyone but you co-star Glenn Powell. The New York Post reports that the rumor started when Sweeney and Powell were spotted, quote, getting cozy on the set, end quote. People, the key words here are on the set. It's a movie. Sweeney also took part in a sketch where she played a Hooters waitress. Can't wait for the rumors to circulate that Sweeney might actually be working at Hooters. Everyone needs a side hustle. Ty Burrell is alive and well. It was confirmed at the SAG Awards last week when the cast of Modern Family showed up to present the ensemble in a comedy series award to this year's winner, The Bear. To get the Modern Family actor to show up, Jesse Ferguson, who played Mitchell Pritchett, called Burrell himself and urged him to be there. Ferguson told Burrell he needed to make an appearance because fans had heard rumors that he might have died. Burrell played Phil Dunphy on the show, which ran on ABC for 11 seasons. Jimmy Kimmel Live host Jimmy Kimmel came to the defense of comedian and Golden Globe MC Joe Coy. Kimmel feels Coy should get another chance at hosting the Golden Globes. Kimmel argued that the embattled comic got the gig at this year's Golden Globes just a few days beforehand and took a lot of flack for going after people in the room. Kimmel says Coy is funny and learned his lessons and would do well if given a second chance. Here's a good lesson. If you want writers to create funny jokes for you, don't tell them their jokes stink in front of a national audience. At least he didn't get slapped by Will Smith. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.